Manny Santos is one of the most popular characters in the long-running Y2K teen drama Degrassi The Next Generation. Her character was iconic for many reasons, including but not limited to her awesome Y2K style, the infamous love triangle between her, Craig Manning, and Ashley Kerwin, and her epic rivalry with Queen B. Paige Michael Chuck. But perhaps Manny's most controversial storyline was in a 2004 episode titled Accidents will happen. In this episode, Manny finds out that she is pregnant by Craig and struggles with if she wants to go through with having the baby or not. In the end, Manny chooses to get an abortion. The episode was so contentious that it did not air in the United States until two years after the original air date. Manny Santos was one of the first and few representations of an Asian leading character in a teen drama. In the beginning of the series, Manny fell into the minority best friend trope, which Degrassi would go on to do with nearly all of its characters of color. However, by season three, Manny underwent a sexy makeover to be taken more seriously by a guy that she had a crush on. However, as a result of her character's makeover, she was villainized in many ways and seen by the other characters as nothing more than a slutty, boyfriend-stealing airhead. Manny's character was even villainized by characters that should have been a support system for her, such as her best friend Emma and her own family. A lot has been said about the character of Manny Santos. Many viewers loved her character and identify her often as their favorite character of the entire series. Upon re-watching the show, I can't help but wonder, why was Manny's character so overly sexualized the way that she was? And was her character more one-dimensional than her white counterparts? This is a Manny Santos Roundtable. Hey everyone, and welcome to my channel. This is a Degrassi Roundtable, and today we're going to talk about the character of Manny Santos. But first, let's introduce ourselves. Hi, I'm Caroline. Hi, I'm Avis. Hi, I'm Misty. And I'm Bianca Melrose, and I'll be your host. The character of Manny Santos started out as being the bubbly, cute best friend to the more seen white character of Emma Nelson. In the first season, Manny fell into the minority best friend trope, which Degrassi would go on to use season after season in characters like Hazel, Shantae, Marisol, Tori, Shay, Tiny, and Winston. But that is another discussion for another time. Why do you think that Degrassi decided to give Manny more characterization and make her a main player in the cast towards the third season? The actualization of characters of color is, mm -hmm. is a thing she was the character that maybe or the actress that maybe was progressing physically the, the, the fastest and maybe they felt like okay we can get away with the storyline but also the character wasn't doing much but being Emma's side like she was in the forefront I feel like it was maybe like a perfect storm kind of thing I feel like it, part of it is Cassie Steele like she's just so captivating you know yes that how do you not make push her to the forefront when she's just this ball of amazing energy you know I feel that like you said Caroline she is a ball of energy and and she's really exciting to watch on screen I feel like you know a part of it was the fetishizing Asian women and Asian girls and they were like this is the perfect person maybe even subconsciously maybe they didn't even do it intentionally but I felt like that was one of the reasons they put her as this kind of from cute to like overtly sexual character sexualized character I think that I got kind of it goes back to relatability in writing characters um because i've seen um on a bunch of other like interviews that other actors have done um like on this other show that i watch how it's primarily a male cast and it's male writers and they have one female role and they didn't really know what to do with the character at first because it was white male writers. They went up to the actress and they basically were like, we don't really know how to write for you. Like we're, we're white men. Like we don't, we haven't had those same experiences that you have. 
And she just said, no, just write me how you would write your study of Degrassi's run if all of the writers on the show were predominantly like male or just white. But I honestly think it started because they just didn't know how to write for a person of color. They never experienced life from that point of view. So they 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 just kind of did what everybody else does and just kind of like, oh, well, we'll just kind of make them a side character. We don't have to do that much with them. So it kind of made their job a lot easier. I 100% mm-hmm. agree. Because if you notice, Emma, who is the main character, has very three-dimensional personality. Even Manny in her mm-hmm. finest seasons, she didn't get three-dimensional enough for me. Yeah, she didn't. Even in the back of like, um, I was watching, you know, to catch up and make sure I was familiar with just the way the scenes look, because I know the storylines. I was looking at, um, you got the look in the background when she, when Liberty is like, are you aware that I can see oh, your yeah. underpants? She's like, are you aware that I don't care? <laughs> and like, Emma is in the background, like, Mm-hmm. like she's not it's not focused on her but you can see her back there reacting and I think that that's a lot of what secondary characters like Manny don't get she's not in the background a lot you know but they throw Emma back there to just react to what's going on with Manny and I think that that's significant because it's like okay she's allowed to have reactions to storylines that do involve her because it's her best friend but don't directly you know it's not something that she needs to be in they could have like if it was happening to Emma they might have cropped Manny out of that you know like it it just seems to me like the emphasis like I agree with you uh Bianca just was placed on Emma being more fleshed out and a person more than a character and like Manny gets all of the you know the thong song like (laughs) like cultural epithets at the time but she doesn't get real feelings beyond oh I'm outraged that my dad won't let me get a boob job and I want to be promiscuous and not even like she says that stuff but just like that's like the way they go for her characters. Like they give her all these like really stereotypical storylines. Well, I mean, even when she has her abortion, she's like, Mm -hmm. I don't want to deal with getting fat and everyone knowing that I'm pregnant. Right. Because like everybody does not want to know you're pregnant because Ashley blew your spot up in the cap. Like there's (laughs) not, and not that there's like (laughs) bad concerns for a teenager to have. But like, yeah. yeah, there's more emotion mm-hmm. that can be done in that storyline. I think at a certain point too, the writers may have been forced to kind of do more with her character because generally like within the fandom, Emma is not really well liked at all. Like people yeah. love Manny. Mm-hmm. And I think just for like sheer like ratings and fan reception, like they almost were kind of forced to do more with her because they were like fans are not really responding to Emma as like the main it girl and they're really responding to Manny. Manny Mm. is like the most likable thing about Emma. (laughs) Yes that's yeah I love it. Yep she balances her out. It's like in the same scene where Emma is being insufferable Manny will come in and like not redeem her but make her better of a character. It is certainly true like they they can't really have Emma without Manny. I definitely do think the pairing between the two of them is relatable because I think we can all agree that we all have that friend that kind of just comes in and puts us in check and like in our place. So I do think that their friendship was kind of realistic in that aspect of having someone that's maybe a little bit more outspoken and not as well like and then having that friend come in there and be like you're not all of that like keep yourself in check kind of mm-hmm. I think it's that but I think it's even just like they subliminally are like Emma can't be that bad because Manny loves her yeah right you know? <laughs> it's like it's like how they trick you into liking Meredith Grey because somebody as cool as Christina wants to be her friend oh my gosh they will do this in in multiple like I, I don't think it works as well as with them because like there are like I think of like the, the pair people compare them to is uh, Claire and Allie and I'm like oh yeah but Claire isn't as bad as mm. Emma no. no and Allie doesn't balance out Claire as well as <laughs> no because Allie is so fucking annoying Emma. oh my gosh Allie yeah. is annoying and it's kind of the, the reverse but also Allie is developed in a way later that makes you not hate her as much earlier you're like oh okay well they just haven't started writing her yet <laughs> the episode where she starts the dance club just like I just Never have I felt secondhand Cringe. embarrassment the way that I do watching that episode. <laughs> I skip it. 
I skip it, Caroline. I get scared to like watch her like get rejected by like well Bianca in the story. Oh my god! Um, like she she pants her her her, her behind. Balancing best friends out. It's like you can't really have Emma without Manny. For the second question, this one is broken into two parts, A and B. So Manny's big episode that in a way reintroduced her to audiences and to the characters in the show is You Got the Look. In this episode, Manny changes the way that she dresses to a much sexier style in order to not be perceived as cute and adorable. A lot has been said about this episode and about how Manny's character arc played out from this point on. So I have two questions in regards to this we'll start with the first one the first question is some people felt that the actress Cassie Steele was exploited by actually having to show her body on camera in the way that it was shown she not only wore a real thong but the camera did a close-up of her body particularly her butt for quite a few quite a long time for this to be a teen show especially back in the day especially using real underage actors so was this appropriate or did it feel exploited? When I watched it, when I was like Degrassi age, it didn't feel exploitive. It felt edgy mm -hmm. and, you know, Degrassi, it goes there. Um, but no, rewatching as an adult, it's not okay. Yeah, to piggyback off of what Caroline said, um, I was watching Degrassi when I was 10 and I, whether or not I should have been watching Degrassi when I was 10 is, I don't know, but I definitely saw it and I was did not think it was weird at all and I was like yes like way to go bitch like do what you want to do because obviously I'm 10 and I'm like oh she's an adult <laughs> um and then now watching it as a 24 year old and my boyfriend who's older than me we were watching it together when it did come to that scene uh, we were both incredibly creeped out like I definitely was like they could have done so much more like creative things like to show that that's what she was doing to kind of get the point across I thought it was a little much to actually just show the zoomed in shot of her butt walking especially for that long yeah. Yeah. I felt weird for even like have seen that in the past I was like whoa I mean they could have just shown like the side view the strap of the thong on her hip is more than enough you don't need the full whale tail if you really like need to oh, show gosh, it that term. right because right. there's a part of me that like when i did my most recent rewatch i'm like this is really creepy and gross but there's also that like nostalgia of when you were a kid and you're like man this was so <laughs> iconic though. i know i know it was yes i think about that every time i rewatch and maybe it's why it's not why but there's a reason about the nostalgia of the early 2000s that i think has to be said the culture was a lot different mm -hmm. like there was things that just were allowed and were like encouraged that are not allowed and encouraged today like you get straight out canceled for a lot of the things that happened back then today not even back then because like it's not that long ago but people treat it like it is but I think that when that happened for me like you know you said Misty like you were you were 10 I was just a little bit older than you but it, it like I was starting to wear things that probably did not make my mother happy and <laughs> she's like no 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 mm -mm. like what are you doing <laughs> Like, why are you wearing that? Because we were about a season behind for the American viewers and the Canadian viewers. I feel like we got it just a little bit later mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. something like that than, than they did at that time. I was watching it, you know, basically live. And I saw that stuff at the mall. I saw my, my older sister wore that. Like, you know, she was just two years older than me. So it's like, you know, at that time, I did not see it as exploitative because kids my age or, or, or a little bit older than me were wearing stuff like that. But of course, now I watch and I'm like, we would never have an actress that age do that. Because you have shows like, we're not gonna say it, we know what show it is, <laughs> who play, <laughs> who play, you know, teenagers and they are 20 years or older. Mm -hmm. And that makes it so that you can get away with a lot of teenage sex. Yeah. I hate to say it like that bluntly, but it's, it, it is true. Like that's what they get away with by using older actors. But at that time it was like, okay. And still Degrassi did do that up until it was off the air in like 2019 or whatever, mm -hmm. like 18. So it's like, they use actors that are relatively within the age of the characters. So it's like, you know, why wouldn't we, we try to go there? We want to be real. 
but yeah. like it was in poor taste for that time I think if you were a little bit older if something if like my mom would have seen me watching that she'd be like whoa who is like what is this 14 year old character wearing a thong on on the tv program? again it was 2006 seven so she did not watch what I was doing and I was gonna say for people like me who grew up like a little bit more sheltered like I grew up with my grandparents, so they didn't really monitor the stuff that I was watching, which was how I was able to get away with watching it in the first place. But I grew up in the South, super religious, stuff like that. So I kind of thought at that young age that like everybody kind of did stuff like that. And it was just me and my upbringing, like, cause I was so young, I didn't know any better. I only knew kind of who was around me and that wasn't around me. So I think if other people that kind of grew up in that same upbringing that I grew up in saw that they would kind of think from a younger age like they would probably want to dress like that more and stuff because they kind of think that's more how the outside world does it if that makes any sense yeah um, so I think that's another reason why I didn't see as it being wrong per se here's my problem with with that whole thing and in Cassie Steele being exploited Degrassi knew exactly what they were doing I believe because the producers were grown at the time and the whole tagline of the show is this is real it goes there no there's nothing real about that scene let me tell you no person back then could have went to school in a blue thong sticking over their pants as soon as she walked in those doors they would have had her in the office absolutely right. not she would not have walked around all day like that well okay no, with no one saying anything until midday mm -mm. Yeah. that was phony that was fake and that was for it was for <laughs> shock value if they wanted to do that in a more realistic light because okay maybe teen girls were doing that then why was it at school that should have been somewhere outside of school mm. there are being and see that goes back to what <laughs> I was saying because we had school uniforms where I went like I didn't even go to a private school like our public school had uniforms so like you could could get sent to the office literally like if your shoulders show so that's I guess kind of why I didn't think that that was like so out there at that age because I was like oh well, we wear uniforms but like if I went to another school it would be like that sorry guys my Absolutely. cat is wanting attention no oh, that was your cat <laughs> oh my gosh it sounds like a whole child I know <laughs> like, like I I miss the days when my cat used to <laughs> <laughs> she gets tired now <laughs> like a baby so this is part b of that question i say manny santos is the first character of asian descent to be on degrassi the next generation many asian women have shared their thoughts about how pop culture has perpetrated harmful stereotypes about asian women and one of those stereotypes is the hypersexualization of asian women in western society did degrassi's portrayal of manny participate in showcasing the hypersexualization of Asian girls and women. I always think so. Mm -hmm. Definitely think they participated in it. Yeah. You like know what I find interesting? There were characters that overlapped um, in, in certain areas or personality. And Manny is the one that they made be kind of the slutty character she was the one that people didn't like she was the one the boyfriend stealer the one who all the guys wanted to be with or use or whatever she was the, and it didn't have to be that way Degrassi strategically wrote it to be that way so no one else was yeah. ever like that either and Emma her best friend was never you know how they say birds of a feather flock together Emma was never cast in that light even when she went to the ravine after that episode mm -hmm. no one was out here calling Emma a hoe or a man stealing mm -hmm. slut right yeah, well slut, to be yeah. fair she wasn't out getting pregnant and she says that in that That's episode true. yeah <laughs> even though it's yeah scary. but like she's also the character I, I did wonder um you know she's a, a year younger than than Craig mm -hmm. who she pursues so it's like why couldn't you have used one of the underused characters in that grade like Paige right who who did you know like if you wanted to go so far as to connect what what had happened to Paige and her, you know, like issues with promiscuity, it's not a stretch to bring Manny in because she was a, a character who was a good opportunity to bring into her like sexual awakening. But I think that the show does a really like dramatic job of it. Yeah, like there, she just suddenly decides like. I'm not going to be dumped for being cute this year <laughs> I know, right? or to, for being too young this year. But like you are a year younger than 
the dude you were mm-hmm. pursuing. Like, mm-hmm. you know, like mm-hmm. it's not like he didn't have a right to tell you you were too young. You were talking about right. cotton candy and, and <laughs> stuffed animals. So <laughs> I love you, know, that episode. you were too young last year. It's an adorable episode because I think that even the flip side of that is having an Asian woman who is too young. Mm-hmm. And who was still looked at as like desirable by someone who was older. It's still the same thing. It's a similar thing. I think it was entirely, definitely intentional because of the way they portrayed her before and after, Mm -hmm. you know, they did the whole, the sweet thing. And then she's like, I don't want to be innocent anymore. I want to be, you know, viewed as more mature, but she doesn't look much different than she did in the previous season right you know it's just the character's kind of viewpoint of herself and her ready to be an object that dudes look at in a way that's you know like not cute right um so it's definitely I don't I think it's more of a laden with like cultural overtones than other things than other characters storylines are Mm -hmm. about their coming of age and and wanting more like autonomy in the way they dress and stuff like Manny's was completely out of the water like she was like on some whole other like stuff I think and it's not just because she was dumb for being too young but I think the fact that she took that in that way just shows how actually like immature she was because if you were older and you said that to someone you wouldn't think or maybe I wouldn't think um, I want them to be sexier. I want them to like maturity level to be older. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I think the fact that she took it a, in like a sexual way, Pages I think words, they right? should have, yeah. Um, I think they should have like looked into that more of like, why did she think that yeah. maturity equaled like sexier instead of like her actual mind was just younger because she did right. like looking back on the date the date that her and Craig and all of them have she was super immature and I'm sitting there thinking like if I was Craig's age like I would not I mm-hmm. she was acting like his little sister and like that's mm-hmm. fine but is she they should have dived in more to like why she thought that he meant sexier whenever he literally thought like you're just maturity level like it just isn't there because I think she could have dressed the same but if she would have just like been more mature yeah then they could have still gone on to have a good relationship maybe I don't know it's crazy because she was still very immature even though her like look was different she was still Mm -hmm. immature as exactly the whole series that says a lot about those guys too though so My third question is, one of the most famous love triangles in teen drama history was the love triangle between Ashley Kerwin, Craig Manning, and Manny Santos. Manny actively went after Craig, knowing that he was dating Ashley, and Craig actively began a secret relationship with Manny, knowing that he had a girlfriend. Ashley had no idea that she was being cheated on until Manny reveals the relationship to her, thinking that she'd already found out about it. Many people called Manny a boyfriend-stealing slut, while a lot less of the blame was put on Craig. Craig even blames his cheating on Ashley and calls her a prude. (laughs) Whose fault was the love triangle? Absolutely everybody's fault, except Ashley's kind of. It's definitely not Ashley's fault. I feel like it's, I feel like it's definitely not Ashley's fault, but like, I feel like if you want to split the blame, because, you know, Manny does participate in knowing that he has a girlfriend, you do. but she is not the one who agreed to be in a relationship. Right. So it is right. more Craig's fault. than it no, is. Manny she did think that they anything. broke up. She doesn't owe anything to Ashley. Like they're not even She friends. does not. Right. They aren't even friends. You're right about that. She don't know her from a can of paint. They're in different <laughs> grades. They don't travel but there's the still that thing of like is that not girl code though like I don't know that's what I'm saying like I think it's Manny's fault a little bit because if you actively know whether you owe anything to the girl or not it's not all Manny's fault but if you it's know it's fault yeah <laughs> it's I not it's more that they both share blame they oh well no not I I, I mean to say is, they don't they share blame but but Manny's like, right. wrong for sure, but I don't think it's Manny's right. fault. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was going to say that's kind of what I Manny, mean to say. Manny's in the wrong. She's in the wrong. Manny displayed some bad behavior there. She made some really bad choices. <laughs> like <laughs> we don't, we do it. not stand. <laughs> she took way it. too much of the um, 
the fallout for the relationship though that fallout should have all been on craig the yeah. people the person in the relationship who was cheating yes him <laughs> like it shouldn't have been her who was the the woman he who, faced i mean like all of that you know what he played, like a little school but like he was still seen as the like the hottie like yeah. he still i mean i have an album I, a wrong, I girl, do wrong girl i do <laughs> think that like people like Ashley and her friends were so right to be mad at Manny because like I said it's just girl code at that point like even if I don't know the person or owe them anything it's kind of just girl code quote unquote like if you actively know that that guy is in a relationship like don't actively try to pursue that it would I feel like it would be a completely different conversation if maybe Manny didn't know that Craig and Ashley were in the relationship but she did so I do think that it's fair for her to take some of the backlash and people be mad at her but i definitely definitely do think that craig got off way too easy for that but theoretically couldn't any uh -huh. woman then any girl <laughs> in that school could have stole craig away he was stealable uh -huh. did not want yes any yeah 100 manny did not want kind of any guy brain. manny wanted craig she didn't want any guy yes. yeah it wasn't about that was craig's problem like like it's wrong regardless of the motivation but I do think there's a difference between a person who goes after people because they're in a relationship mm -hmm. and a person who is willing to be a participant in cheating to be with the person that they want to be with. And it's still mm -hmm. shitty, gross behavior. It's still inexcusable, but the motivation, like, Manny didn't deserve to be labeled a homewrecker. No. Oh, definitely not. No. Especially that young. She had a someone who was put like completely there with her. He literally came to her. He he accosted her at a place where she was skating and was like, You're the one for me. Like No, he did. He said he broke up with Ashley and everything. Right. <laughs> like I broke up with her. Like, you're the one for me. I was wrong. Like, what? Like 15-year-old girl would be like, <laughs> right. like I do I'm have sorry. a question like, though. <laughs> because at what okay. point can you consider someone a home wrecker? Because she did also go after Spinner when she when Spinner was in a relationship with Paige. Now I'm not slut shaming you know anyone, I mean? but I'm saying at a certain point, is it not just who they are as a person, and not just oh I really wanted to be with that person? I would have done anything for them because she literally did the same thing right well, after. Well, you know what? Up. I think the real question is, who are these guys? Why are you dating these? These guys are trash. That's true. She's definitely I, that, though. She's I have some I observed. <laughs> I, I just had to say it was very sly. And upon my 167th rewatch, I saw <laughs> Manny um, when she went after, right after that moment when Craig came on the, the ice. Uh, no, wait, no. It was when uh, Manny was doing her little uh, like skate thing with the little yeah. kids at the recital. And um, they were kissing in the little alcove. Like she she pulled him aside because he came and suddenly and Craig and then um, Spinner comes by and she like, she like looks him up and down like, and like flirts with him and does a little like cute thing. And I'm like, y'all get together like next season I don't like that <laughs> oh my <laughs> like God. I don't I don't like that Manny and I love her mm -hmm. I love her but this is only upon my like million three watch that I really discovered that she can be very flirty she but she's supposed to be that character yeah she's flirting yeah. with everybody well, like why did they do that to her I, <laughs> but I think there's a oh sorry Caroline I always took the spinner thing as kind of a like tr still trying to get Craig's attention mm-hmm mm-hmm Pro right, like trying to be flirty to 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 like be like I can be with whomever I want, mm -hmm. you know. Like I'm, I Watch I, me play I, I, I can interpret it that way. But yeah, yeah like that's, her, that's so like because she's still probably still trying to get Craig at that point. Like I always read her trying to be like Spinner's not ugly. He's not an ugly dude, but it's probably for clout. Like yeah, like, yeah I no, he was popular. <laughs> like I can't, I can't. Like who are your closest friends? Hmm. Like Jimmy's, you know, got a lot with him. I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna mess with him because after season like five, Jimmy's got a lot with him. So I'm not gonna mess with him. But like, you know, Marco's gay. Mm -hmm. uh, Spinner, <laughs> Spinner's like your best friend. Also, like, she did not like Paige, much. which is a motivation. She didn't like Paige, which is a hundred percent. I can have whatever you had. How many? How much double dipping there was? 
Oh my gosh. I mean, isn't that kind of common at that age though? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Teenage drama common. Like every like I, I love Gossip Girl as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, the OG Gossip Girl yeah. because I was in the right age group for that. Like, you know, I was in high school at that time, 2007. So I was like, okay, you know, these are my people. Like you're double dipping in your friend group. The only people you don't sleep with are your siblings. <laughs> like that's pretty much what Gossip and, Girl did. The only people. and I mean, I don't know how they were actually trying to portray Degrassi if it was like this big giant school or if it was a little school. But I came from a really tiny town, so the school. I mean, there just wasn't a lot of options. So I mean, it was really common. Like not even just within friend groups per se, but just in general. Because I mean, like who else are you gonna date? There's like thirty people. <laughs> to choose from. No, I didn't. It's not that small, but you know the idea. Though. Like there's yeah. not a lot of options. Okay, I'm gonna move on to the fourth question, guys. In the season five premiere episode, we're introduced to Peter Stone. Emma instantly develops a huge crush on Peter and is hoping to get his attention. However, Peter is actually interested in Manny. Manny dismisses his interest in her and tries to get him to like Emma, but he's not interested. Later at a party, Peter films a drunk Manny as she takes her shirt off for the camera. Later, after Manny calls Peter a freak for filming her and for trying to blackmail her into going out with him, he distributes the tape of her taking off her tap to the entire school. This would be a crime by today's standards. However, this was 2005. Peter gets a slap on the wrist for the incident and Manny is heavily mocked and almost loses her best friend after Emma finds out that Manny took her shirt off for Peter. Why do we think that Degrassi was so seemingly relaxed about having consequences for Peter and little sympathy was shown uh, for Manny in what now would have been known as something close to maybe revenge porn? And even though it was 2005, should Degrassi have done have done a better job on this episode considering they were known for pushing boundaries? I mean, if we're going for realism of the time, I think it was accurate because something similar happened to my sister who's quite a bit older than me. And that is pretty much the reaction she got. So for that point in time, that is 100% realistic, I think. However, that does not make it right at all. For now, it's realistic. Nudes still get leaked and people are like, well, what what were you doing sending nudes? Mm-hmm. And I will like, say that I actually um sorry not sorry no no go ahead no I just um this affects my life a little bit directly I had a, a friend a good friend in, in college who was literally filmed with like against her will like in a you know how girls just don't wear clothes in their house I don't I don't wear mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I wear my boxers I wear my crop top whatever and my bra and you know it was filmed when we were in college and she wasn't wearing much clothes and he distributed it and said a whole bunch of stuff about what he did with her and it was not defended by the faculty this is a big thing um that happens like okay you know why were you wearing this why were you in the position to be filmed all these questions like okay I was violated like you know this dude it doesn't really matter the circumstances why did he have a camera out to film this and that is the issue with Peter it's like you know it it is 100% early um internet and early distribution of CP per the internet Mm-hmm. But that's entirely what it was. Like, you know, he, he should not have been let off because she was 16. Yeah. When that happened, like she was a child, like she was trying to, she didn't even agree with her body enough to accept it as it was growing. So she wanted to get it augmented. She was such a kid. And wasn't you know, that like, after the zero tolerance bullying policy? Like, yes. <laughs> Do y'all remember when them posters went up in your school? <laughs> But you have to remember <laughs> that Peter Stone's mother is Principal oh, Hatsalakos. Yeah, oh, no. Yeah. And I do think, um, I guess when I say, like, it's more accurate for the time, I guess really what I meant is, like, I feel like now um, it still happens, but people are will still kind of take the, the side of the girl more than it used to. Because, like, even just today, I was reading an article on Facebook um, about how Kim Kardashian's tape almost got leaked like to her like actual son 
Mm -hmm. and even people in the comments I mean it was absolutely disgusting they were saying like oh she deserves it she should have never put that out in the world not that someone shouldn't have showed that to an, a literal child who can't even right. read but she shouldn't have done it in the first place so I mean it, it does still happen but I think now society's like a little bit more inclined to kind of side with the woman but yeah it definitely does happen still I mean I think there are laws in pl place that in theory better protect us Mm -hmm. that like there weren't revenge porn laws in mm -hmm. 2006 yeah but mm -hmm. like the general public attitude is still like don't take nudes if you don't want your nudes leaked don't walk around your house in your bra if you don't want some guy to film it apparently mm -hmm. right and i think you know if you go a little further and you look at like hatsal echoes track record <laughs> she does not come through for the young women of degrassi when they are being abused yes yeah, true which is really yeah. always was surprising to me because she's known as like one of the more attractive like teachers and i think that they really could have done the viewers like i don't know if you want to call it a service but they could have dived into like her helping the young girls that experience that more because I'm sure with her age and growing up in that time she had to have experienced that I mean even just within the school they're always talking about like how hot she is how sexy she is so if I just feel right. like if anybody would have sympathized with the girl they would have been her yeah. she's got a whole episode being like hey JT you're a good student stop sexualizing me yeah exactly Yo. Yep. literally literally caroline and it and it goes on to not mean anything mm -hmm. with but her characterization being that? yeah how often we don't you know she's, she's like just known for who... being one of the more attractive people that work at the school hot salako so i mean like come on now it's in her name and it and it and it goes on to like caroline really mean nothing like it doesn't pay off. She's not, she doesn't go to combat being looked at as, as someone beautiful and, you know, like beyond that to, 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 get to the root of, okay, people that are attractive are often taken advantage of and, and all of these things that, that often happen to her students. Like Paige is someone who was assaulted by not only someone, she wasn't even a principal in the, the, re the regime for, but also by a, a student teacher that mm -hmm. she was in the regime for, and she did not defend Paige. And then she goes on to not defend someone. I, I don't know if she's like, I don't know what her, her viewpoint is like on not defending these students, but that is, she's one of the more ineffectual principles where she's like, she, she says one or two like uh, strong lines and then says nothing else. She reminds me of like that parent that's just kind of like, oh, don't do that. And then mm -hmm. they just never, they, they just trust that they're not going to do that again, but there's never real life consequences to people's actions. She's just like, well, I told them not to do that. So like, hey, you just won't do that again. Like, right. no. It's interesting because yeah. they try to redeem his character later on. Peter, I feel like he probably gets, um, like Spinner gets a really awesome redemption storyline. Mm -hmm. Fiona gets a really awesome redemption storyline because they decide they want to do something with her. Same with Spinner. Um, Peter, they try, but there's just too much meth. I'm sorry. Yeah. And there's, yeah. too, <laughs> there's too much like terrible like behavior yeah. to <laughs> like to well, redeem right. him. Because like but they try. Spinner, Spinner's kind of a dick, but he's like your standard teenage Lovable. boy dick. He's not, <laughs> you know. Yeah, Manny Trunk and filming her tits, dick. You know, he yeah. never did anything quite that bad. He did some really bad shenanigans, and which is what this story wants you to. <laughs> right. He, you know, Peter really did some bad stuff, but not like okay, Spinner just he just helped somebody facilitate like a, a school shooting. That was crazy. No, Whatever. That was Paige's fault. <laughs> Manny had many ups and downs with the several with several of the other female characters on the show. There was a Manny versus her most famous nemesis, Paige. They often fought over who was the real it girl, and they competed for the affection of Paige's boyfriend, Spinner, who developed a thing for Manny while still with Paige. There was Manny versus Ellie. 
Ellie was increasingly jealous of the fact that her crush Craig was very much interested in Manny and not her. And at times it was even Manny versus her best friend on the show, Emma. Emma and Manny fought over a lot of things with their relationship often being thought of as toxic by the fandom. One of the things that almost ended their friendship was when uh, the new guy, Peter, that Emma had a crush on, was actually more interested in Manny instead. And before that, Emma is shown to be interested in Craig in the earlier seasons, but he also shows interest in Manny. This made for a lot of jealousy surrounding Manny from the other female characters, simply because guys paid Manny more attention. So the question is, why do we think that the writers made this very conscious decision to put so much male attention on Manny? What message was this show trying to say about the character of Manny Santos? And was some of the jealousy ever justified that the other female characters felt towards her? Justified? I mean, yeah. I think that Ellie always saw Manny as a boyfriend stealer. Mm -hmm. So she just didn't like her. Like, plain and simple. And Paige didn't like her because not only did she see her as a threat, but also, you know, she witnessed some BS happening between her and Mr. Oleander. She saw some some personal dirt. So Paige had a reason not to like her. <laughs> and, you know, Emma also just had m many jealous reasons not to like Emma, uh, not to like Manny because she, you know, even the season season five um, premiere, she's telling her, you're beautiful. You know, they're, you're crazy to want to change anything. You're gorgeous. Like, why do you, like, I actually even think that with Emma's future eating disorder, she always saw Manny as a, a, a very perfect person mm -hmm. and didn't understand why she had the problems that she had. And I think that Manny saw her the same way. Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. why do you have the problems you have? You're yeah. beautiful. And yeah. it's like, if y'all could have a little bit of what each other has, I don't know why, <laughs> even, even with the, even with the, you know, problems with Emma's eating, mm -hmm. I think it would still, for some reason, balance out. It's really weird that they, they had Manny, who is a very, like, self-conscious character at the heart of it, because she goes along with Emma's, you know, eating disorder and, and mm -hmm. other things of being really insecure about her physical appearance and wanting to get plastic surgery, even more than Emma. Mm -hmm uh mm. like she's still seen as someone who's the most desirable and who's yeah. the the symbol of everybody's desire uh and it's really weird and I think that that's not how the character feels about herself it's just how everybody sees her and I think that that's like the whole point is like she's never the one who thinks she's pretty right well she's also you know she's turning on tv and seeing girls who look like Emma and any girls mm -hmm. that look like her are playing the best friend, you know? Mm -hmm. She's opening yeah. magazines and she's seeing Emma. Like, I totally get it. I feel like often, or more times than not, girls don't really have a, like, a good sense of, like, if they're actually pretty or not. Because, like, I'm sure y'all know, like, when we were growing up, you never really saw, like, I never saw girls with curly hair that were a little chunky. Like, and if they were, they were side characters. Like, me and my boyfriend, we still kind of talk about that because I do get a little jealous sometimes when we're watching a show and, like, he says, oh, the, the blonde girl's pretty or this girl's pretty and they look nothing like me. And I'm so kind of like, well, how can you think they're pretty when I don't look anything like them and you think I'm pretty? So either you don't think I'm pretty or, you know, or you're lying or something. So, I mean, I do think that the, the jealousy is real because people, they always, they have a very skewed sense of self and like, they're always putting so much worth into like what other people think about them. So you guys felt like it was an appearance thing why the other girls were insecure about Manny oh a hundred percent because as much as she like, did doesn't look matter like them they did not look like her either exactly right. Manny didn't really look like anybody well, you I know think like it's confidence too for as Oof, as self-conscious as she really is mm -hmm. she Take gets up every day it. and mm -hmm. puts on her thong and exudes <laughs> confidence yes right like, <laughs> right like they don't know if it's real or fake they have no idea like it's fake but she and puts often, it on like it's real every day. And I always thought that Manny's confidence came across much more real than like Paige's. Because even when I go back and see the rewatches, I don't know if anybody else ever thought this way, but I always saw Paige as way more insecure. And that's kind of why she was more of like the mean one. Whereas mm -hmm. Manny is, is 
also like an it girl, but she's not perceived as as like mean spirited as Paige. Right. So Manny I think that's another to, thing. Manny's though. effortless. Manny doesn't yeah. have to tell you she's better than you the way that Paige. She's does. beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And I Paige think that's another, is beautiful. The reason too. why Paige. I think that's another reason why Paige was so jealous of Manny. When someone's effortless like that, it's kind of like again, I'll compare um, Manny to Allie in the way that she's effortlessly beautiful. You know, like she doesn't have to do anything, but she does not believe that she's beautiful, and that's a lot of Allie's arc too. That I feel mm-hmm. like they kind of stamped like Manny's arc into Allie's arc because like Allie's beautiful she's a beautiful person without the character so you know like the actress is just gorgeous so they they went through she'd never had an ugly face just like Manny's character so it's like why you know you take her through not thinking she's beautiful which is the same thing that Manny goes through she doesn't she she doesn't think she's great she settles for half of her worth dating trash guys and like <laughs> she could have been the top tier and I'm sorry like as much as uh you know people want to love on Craig Craig is trash yeah. and yeah. he should be treated as such and <laughs> no it says a lot when your best boyfriend is Jay Hogarth <laughs> When you're when I've the, never people, when the first person way. people ship you with is Jay Hogarth, yeah, that's the person I, I ship like Mandy with. Kind of would, <laughs> I kind of think that Jay redeemed himself, though. If we're he just did. talking about redemption art, he, he did. The grass that goes I Hollywood think... redeems <laughs> Jay. <laughs> Great, he does though. He does though. He gets I mean, it. if he Manny messes had himself dated up and Jay, redeems himself in the grass that goes it, Hollywood. <laughs> If Manny had dated Jay before Jay's redemption arc, then that would be a lot more terrible than that is her best boyfriend than it is after his redemption arc. But it's still like he's gotten much better. And I like to think that he continues to grow. If we want people to get better, we have to give them room to grow. But like (laughs) when they disappear from Degrassi, he's good, but he's not great. (laughs) He's not great. I think what you're saying is the bar is just set really low. (laughs) It is for Manny. For a dude that doesn't mistreat her and doesn't. Is that not realistic? Because don't we all know that girl or have been that girl that just always trash people? It's realistic. It just sucks because she's so beautiful (laughs) Um, (laughs) and a sweet person and never really is a darn cinnamon roll and never really did anything wrong in her life. Like, what did Manny really do? right Craig. what did manny really do like let's think about like i can think of a bunch of things that emma did that affected other characters around her yeah. like mm-hmm. aside from doing that three-way thing with craig and ashley oh, yeah. what did what did manny really do nothing she was there for nothing judgmental <laughs> ass she was friends with fucking mia she was good to me after horrible. jt no, died right. she no Darcy. she like right like the only thing that maybe she did was like we should throw a party yeah, yeah. <laughs> i mean fair okay yeah no fuck like, she wanted she when she was thirsty for the party but like who isn't thirsty for the party for no occasion okay like it I wasn't don't think, no I occasion very it was horrible. liberty's birthday yeah oh, she made God. an occasion she was like we need an occasion so what is the occasion? Happy I'm birthday! I'm just like, imagine how much she has to get stabbed. So we all agree that all the guys kind of liked Manny because of her confidence, and she's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, and she's fun, and she's not she's not judgmental. She's very free spirited. I feel like mm-hmm. fun. Yeah, like they know game when they saw it. <laughs> <laughs> they know that she was fun, and she wasn't going to take things too seriously. She wasn't, you know she was not damaged at that point like you know for most of them she didn't have no major trauma like Mandy was good I'll jump into the sixth question there was a lot of controversy surrounding the episodes accidents will happen so much so that this episode was not even shown in the USA until years later in this episode Manny finds out that she is pregnant and struggles with going through with the pregnancy or terminating it in the end Manny chooses to have an abortion how did this episode help to destigmatize abortion and has it become less or more controversial of a topic since more it does seem like it's more controversial yeah. Uh, yeah especially here in texas where they're literally passing laws about it is disgusting i think it's probably less like controversial to like portray it in media 
Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. a teen show having a storyline where a character had an abortion would not be shocking now. Right. Mm-hmm. I was going to say that that's kind of exactly what I was going to say is I feel like they destigmatized it in the sense of like it is kind of talked about more um, mm-hmm. now than it was in personal lives and just like on public display. But I think it's gotten more controversial just as a topic altogether. Yeah, yeah, I agree. 100%. Yeah, I mean, just as I know it's a very brief tangent, just to go into uh, Degrassi High, I believe, um, had a, like their first season episode was with the twins, and, and it was a, an abortion storyline as well. Mm-hmm. And they actually cut it um, on, because it was airing in PBS in the US at the time. So they cut it to alter. Um, one of the twins basically going up and and having making the decision to support her twin in the abortion so they cut that so I think that this is something that they just do Canada has always been more progressive in in showing us these storylines of like choosing Mm -hmm. and and the fact that Manny was able to have you know the choice to to go and and you know and and have that happen is is something that you know of course next class goes on to do and everything but it 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 was revolutionary for the time um and i just think it was important but it was also not shown for us in the way that it was meant to be shown Mm -hmm. and i think that that's a lot of the problem with america (laughs) like usa in general is just we don't respect that that fundamental like okay you know this teenager does not want to have a baby you know, let's just start there, you know, like, and they should be allowed to have resources for that. And that was in 2005, six. So like, why is that not a thing now? And like, one of the biggest arguments that I've always like asked people that are kind of pro, what is it, pro-life, um, is if you wouldn't allow like a 13, a 14, 15, 16, even 17 year old to like actively go and adopt a child, you would say, oh, you're not old enough, like, you can't, you know, provide this, you can't provide that, so then why is it okay to force a 13, 14, 15, 16, whatever year old to have a kid that they're also not ready for? Like, just because you did something and there's a consequence of it doesn't mean it has to be that drastic, like, why would you not, like, prevent that? Well, because privatized adoption is legalized human trafficking, and we got to keep that industry going. I mean, yeah, that's true. Caroline blowing the lid off the place. <laughs> <laughs> I like, we don't want to have that conversation. <laughs> I've very recently animal. gone down the adoption rabbit hole. And like, not that I, I think that it's inherently across the, like it can be done well, but it usually isn't. Second to last question. Manny was often treated as property by the guys in the show. They fought over her, not to be in a loving relationship with her, but to use her. Even the lovable character of JT becomes very unlikable when he develops a thing for Manny. When she finally gives him a chance after years of him pestering her to date him, he acts as if she owes him sex because she had sex with other guys, namely Craig in the past. Why did the guys on the show treat Manny this way? And why wasn't there a conversation around the treatment of Manny by the guys on the show? I mean, I think for back then and even probably still to this day, that's that's pretty accurate. Um, I know that that like they they don't do anything to kind of cause um, or like fix actual root of the problem. They just kind of blame us for it being a problem. And so instead of teaching the men like women aren't your property just because they had sex with someone else doesn't mean they'll have sex with you. They were just kind of, they blamed it on the woman. Well, she shouldn't have had sex with him in the first place. So, I mean, that, that definitely still is happening today. And that, that's very accurate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a trope of, of popular teen TV. It's not like it's not a thing that is perpetuated. Like a lot of, teen like hot girls are seen as okay you know like why aren't you being like you're promiscuous looking Mm -hmm. so like you know you're the one that's supposed to be you you date multiple guys so like you know why aren't you acting this way like we have this right over you kind of thing and I mean it, it is really gross that it's kind of carried over from that like blueprint 
I feel like, because I feel, I mean, you know, we can go back to like the 1990s of the, like the beginning of teen TV, but yeah. like most blueprints are of the, like, you know, it's like the promiscuous girl who's usually the hot girl and is desired and everything. And she may or may not be that way in person or personably, but like, that's who she's portrayed as. Yeah. And like Manny was the sweetest girl. She did not, she just wanted somebody to like take her, her seriously and yeah. love her right and not like mistreat her like and it was it's like I I think about like you know the character who must not be named from the show we must not talk about like uh it's <laughs> the blonde haired girl yeah, yeah, is like yeah. a similar Cassie character or sorry Cassie Maddie dang <laughs> Maddie uh Manny because look at all the Maddie, Cassie, Manny um, parallels. Like they just, like they do the, the the girl who wants to be loved and who will do anything yeah. to be loved kind of thing. It's just like the, the blueprint of that. It's like, mm. you know, she's the sweetest girl, but like she wants to be loved and she'll do anything for that. So mm -hmm. it's like she in turn becomes property mm -hmm. because dudes just don't see her as anything else. It's like, she's just a personality. She's just a body, whatever. Yeah. Well, and I think that that speaks to how women are kind of, at least in our society, treated as a whole, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. I've been rewatching Dawson's Creek because yeah. I don't know, I guess I hate myself. <laughs> I was going to say, do you, do you, what's going on? <laughs> first, well, so first off, Dawson is a fucking inside, but that's beside the point. <laughs> He gets so, like, he takes it so personally when he finds out that Jen's not a virgin. Mm. Like, you could think, you would think that, like, he had just found out that she had murdered his family wow. by how personally he takes <laughs> yeah. it that she's not a virgin. And she, like, it's, it's always been that yeah. way. And especially, I think that Manny, I don't know if you want to say like she goes along with it, but at least I feel like she never really like does anything to stop them from fighting over her. I think that kind of comes from her dad because we do get that small glimpse of her dad kind of being like almost more cold hearted towards her. Like I know, um, like they seem, you know, very, like, their culture is more strict, like, man of the house type of thing, and, like, me being from Texas in a small town and religious, I could, or from a religious background, I'm not religious anymore, but from that background, kids are kind of more like you're seen and not heard, especially females, mm. so I think that's something to look at, too, is I know that everyone wants to say, like, oh, daddy issues, daddy issues, but that is an actual thing that happened, like, even in the other show that we don't talk about, the same thing happens with the blonde character. Like her dad just up and leaves. So it's like, they will just do anything for that like male attention. Well, I, mean, um, I think too, like one way or the other, you are taught as a, as a girl that the most valuable thing about you is your sexuality. It's either being a virgin and modesty and purity culture, mm -hmm. or it's like women, you know, I'm trying, I can't figure out how to word it because it's almost 11 o'clock on the East Coast, but that like, <laughs> <laughs> words you know what I mean? just it's being, like, just being sexually, like being desirable or desirable, being right? Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. and so of course, Manny's just going to roll with it because she thinks it's what it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. She And she grew up in this very rigid household. She doesn't want to be the Madonna, so she has to be the whore. Yeah. And mm. she does not want to be the Madonna. Yeah. She so does. She has to be the whore. That's mm -hmm. what it is, though. Which, and I hate that's that word. That's what it is. I hate I it, too, but that's what it is, you yeah. know, like, in terms of, like, what, what like, the figures are of women. That is what it is. And, and Manny is just like, I don't want to be cute anymore. I don't want to be innocent anymore. I don't want to be young anymore. Like look, looked at like that anymore. Right. So I got to step it up. <laughs> and that's the price you pay for stepping it up is that now you're an object. Deal with it. You were an and object either way them. though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'll move into the last question. So this is a long one. It says mm -hmm. in the episode where Manny wants to be an actress and considers breast implants, there was a lot of tasteless racial commentary thrown in from her father being overbearing and calling her a loose girl and kicking her out of the 
out of the family home to her mother being passive and not having any say in the matter whatsoever. There's a quick conversation about Manny supposedly being insecure because she's not blonde and thin and more Emma-esque. It seems like the show is trying to insinuate that Manny, who was widely considered to be the most gorgeous person in the show, is insecure about her looks because she is not white looking. And lastly, there was a strange comment made by Manny's agent who apparently thinks that Manny needs to lose weight. She tells her to lose weight by saying, lay off the beans and rice. This comment had racial undertones to it that made people uncomfortable. However, while there were these incidences of racial undertones in the show, the show never commits to any incidences as being actual discussions of racism or microaggressions. Manny's character does not get the opportunity to discuss the racism she faces, and the show does not dive deeper into her identity, minus that debut episode. Why did Degrassi choose to do this in what I felt like was a huge missed opportunity. Degrassi, it goes there, unless there is uncomfortable conversations about racism. <laughs> yeah, because they they missed that point in every season with every character of color. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that goes back to um, really early on in the conversation about how like the writers can only write through experiences that they've like seen and they know about. Mm-hmm. And I know that a lot of the writers, um, at least at that point were primarily white people that never really like experienced that so I I really don't think they knew how to really like actually go there with those storylines um they worked off of stereotypes yeah Mm -hmm. because I mean if you go up to someone that's never experienced uh, any racism at all their entire life and you tell them to write like a five-page paper on racism they're not really gonna have much to write Right. So mm-hmm. I, I think that's the fault just on the back end of the, the team that they put together to make the show. Which is right. disappointing because like the casting is relatively diverse. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But then they're just like, we're not going to do anything with our not white characters. Right. So that's true. such a chronic problem with the grassy that I have like it's a gripe, you know, like okay, you don't develop your your people of color unless you're giving them stereotypical things to deal with yeah and like you know liberty i still have a problem with liberty not to bring her out the woodwork but like why she had to be pregnant that like she could have like there could have been horrible. there could have been any other storyline for liberty not only did she get pregnant as a teenager but then Boy- her boyfriend gets stabbed and i like i love and that, that episode that is stereotypical roaring yes I feel like the but show knew also, what it was doing, though. They knew what it was doing because they made that episode with the sorority I think where so. they were all like, oh, my God, you were pregnant and gave right. her away. I think that, that they happening. knew what they were they doing. They knew what they were doing. That could have been Emma. Could have been Emma. I didn't ever realize a ton of, like, microaggressions, like, even towards me because I'm biracial. Like, I'm half white, half Puerto Rican. And mm-hmm. looking back on, like, stuff that I heard as a kid, there was a lot of stuff directly towards me that I just never picked up on that I pick up on now like I don't know how many times I've heard um especially in Texas I feel like I'm making my state look so bad but um like I'll see more of the like rednecky people and they'll talk about how like they hate mixed people and stuff like that but it I'm okay because they know me and I'm like Mm -hmm. but no I'm you could know literally any of these biracial people like that's not okay like I'm I shouldn't like I shouldn't be like excluded from that because you know me like you can literally get to know anybody Mm -hmm. so I mean there's also that I feel like a lot of people probably like me didn't pick up on like the subtle like racial things like that within Degrassi like the beans and rice thing like I'm from the south we eat beans and rice so I didn't even Mm -hmm. think of that as like a racial thing towards her because she's Filipino Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah like it's and I also when I heard that comment, I thought of it as like, okay, they're, they're miss, um, like they're, they're thinking that she's like, uh, some sort of, um, Hispanic or, or Spanish or something like that, which is something that I feel like people who look slightly of that, you know, descent or whatever get, like I've had people and I don't, I don't feel like I, I, I you know, I have, Spanish to send in my family I don't feel like I look any sort of Spanish but people will come up to me and speak to me in Spanish and I'm like 
I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> please yeah. don't talk, please don't assume where I come from or what I speak. But I think that that's probably a lot of what that was. That scene, that's always how I thought of that scene is that she thought that she was possibly Puerto Rican or Mexican or mm. something like that, like the, the predominancy that eats beans and rice. She wouldn't is always what I a thought character, of. basically. She would have not, no. It was 100% ethnically motivated. They thought it was ethnically motivated. And, and her scenes or her storylines in this part of the season going forward are ethnically motivated. Yeah. It's a lot of her disliking the lumps and humps and you know whatever mm. else that that woman says. And it's like, I always thought that the character was skinny and like she was she was always extremely like looked like 10 pounds within emma like she was never like yeah large but like and, and so to me you know it the whole arc with with just participating in the 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 um eating disorder and everything it went along with it because i was like that is such the culture at that time mm -hmm. you just were not seeing diverse bodies you were not seeing you know i used to get a subscription to 17 and um uh what was the other one um some girl cosmo uh, girl cosmo girl cosmo girl both of them cosmo girl and i had a i had a, a long time subscription to 17 but i did also get a subscription to cosmo girl a couple years in a row and I was obsessed with those magazines but they were all the same girls like I had them in my closet I could pull them out I won't but um, <laughs> they are extremely thin you know like one perception of what a body should look like and that was what we saw at that time mm -hmm. and so her looking at, on billboards and looking through the the you know that's all what it was it's yeah. like we did not have other representations of bodies like we have now and it's yeah. really like sucks that she grew up in that time because she was not much further off from Emma in, in right. terms of body shape right. and tight. Yeah. Like they were both skinny as heck. So it's right. like they and could I, both have had cheeseburgers. <laughs> and I think even with the amount of confidence that Manny had, that kind of stuff still can subconsciously mess with you. Um, because it's like I was saying earlier, like I'm more, I guess, thick is what you would say now. And like, I get compliments on it all the time. But when I was younger, I was never, you know, my siblings, they're really, really skinny. And so they would always, you know, be like, oh, you got thighs, you got a booty, like even still, like people talk about it and it made me really uncomfortable. And I still, to this day, like, even when I am feeling quote unquote more confident, I still in the back of my head, I'm like, well, am I really good looking? Because if I was, I would, I'd see more people like me and it's not as bad now, but it was horrible when I was a kid. Cause you never saw anybody with curly hair, anybody with any kind of like meat on their bones or anything like that for like years and years and years. So it really messes with you like subconsciously and you don't even realize it. Oh no, I had a whole like moment when I first started watching the show that we're not going to mention with Kat <laughs> because like you yeah. see big girls now more, but they've got tits and they've got ass and I don't really have either of those things. And Kat is infinitely hotter than I will ever be, but that she's a bigger girl with like not that much going on up top was like, oh my God. And it was like huge. Yeah. Representation. Yeah. I feel like just your last question is like a huge missed opportunity is like most of Manny's character is like, they just, they dropped the ball on a lot. Like they did a lot of the negative representations of, um, of a, a person of color in that position of being you know sweet not even person of color of an Asian woman being a sweet younger you know I, I like angelic looking woman and then wanting to have that sexual autonomy and then growing up and having opposition and not only opposition from her family but opposition from people who are close to her and like why are you doing this but then once she grows into it it's like she's fetishized literally constantly it's like she's just the cute person Shin, and the hot person sorry not the hot person the cute person the hot person she's not allowed to be anything else yeah um, right. she's just literally the token like tambourine girl for a lot of seasons <laughs> and it's like it sucks because she's they could have done so much more with her they could have really addressed a lot of of the things that they were subtly hinting at they could have really had her talk about it 
yeah. and and not had it be something that we had to guess at so that's that's a lot for me it's like just like Manny was done wrong in the way that like we just looked at her thong and we didn't <laughs> Song girl, wrong girl. We, <laughs> song girl, wrong girl. And that's oh, all yeah. she was. It's oh my God, girl, yes. Girl. Craig's song. It's like, I know they say like, okay, um, Manny walks so, you know, the other young lady could run, but like, no, like, because the other young lady actually has sexual autonomy that she discusses. Like, Manny yeah. does not have that. She does not get to have a voiceover and 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 uh, talk about the fact that she or not even a voiceover because that's rude but uh talk about how she's just like feeling this way or that way and or have somebody explain her feelings like she doesn't have that she yeah. literally we guess about what's going on because we watch her for for a couple seasons like we don't get manny's inner thoughts mm-hmm. she's right. just not fleshed out that way and like i think degrassi like has a real problem with just like things happen and then there's sometimes aftermath and then we never talk about it yeah, again it's so annoying you know what i mean like after school manny had an abortion sucks. at 14 <laughs> why is that not coming up right. again before college right right Mm -hmm. why why is it not come up when liberty's pregnant yeah literally like i have a problem with the fact that they they just do a lot of those really intense storylines like you know to bring it back to emma why does emma have an ed and then it's talked about one other time Mm -hmm. and then it's not brung up again like Mm -hmm. and i Mm -hmm. i get that eating disorders are very very serious but like and you can get hospitalized and all of that and it can happen really pretty quickly but like it's a two episode arc and then she's in the hospital it's like who has anorexia for a week right and, like, and what's that crazy is, is <laughs> as a kid I remembered that being a lot more drawn out than it actually was and then on my rewatch I was like wait it was yes, two episodes, episodes to do this. two episodes <laughs> yes honey, and then know, they had a relapse felt- and then she's like yeah I don't want to do this anymore <laughs> I'm good. I'm gonna come meet your moussaka. <laughs> like, right? Sometimes I knit now. It helps me eat. Right? Yeah. Like, girl, I'm sorry. What? Like, people yeah. struggle with this disease and it's debilitating for, for their entire lives. Like, to right. not depict it that way is like a missed opportunity. Just like Manny, she has body dysmorphia, basically. Like, she literally looks in the mirror and is like, and participates in Emma's ED and everything and it's not brought up again yeah but mm-hmm. it continually the way she looks and the, it is disproportionate to the way she feels about herself so like they could have explored that they could have been like you know I've always felt this way about myself that even after I started doing this you know remember when I wore that thong like they could have had her <laughs> be, yeah. like they could have had her had a whole talk and like before they dropped her and Emma off at, at like in the middle of college whenever that was I know right? <laughs> like they could have literally had her bring it full circle and talk about all the struggles she's had with her her self-worth because it's really what it boils down to is her self-worth is her arc as a character they don't let her feel pretty they don't let her treat herself like she deserves to be treated until jay comes along and then he Mm -hmm. forces her into that in my opinion um (laughs) even though i ship it he like punches her like you're worth it and she's like okay so (laughs) whatever it takes right whatever it takes (laughs) no I mean I think that's part of the thing though is like Degrassi like and I love it I love it but like it's basically just a million after school specials (laughs) yeah that are connected but like (laughs) also each one kind of exists in a vacuum yes well, thank you, ladies, for being here for the Manny Roundtable. This was a great discussion. There's so much to be said about Manny. I don't know if there's ever enough time, but she certainly is one of the most intriguing characters of the series. Mm-hmm. Bye. Bye. Bye.